The Main Streets and Back Roads of New England is available at bookstores now or order a copy directly from the Globe Pequot Press at 800-243-0495. have a slightly bigger knife end on, do you? Like a machete? No? You know, we've met our share of celebrities over the last two decades on Chronicle. Oprah Winfrey, Faye Dunaway, Peter Jennings, Martina Navratilova, just to name drop a few. But tonight, we'd like to sing the praises of the unsung. The men and women of New England who bring us their quirks, their obsessions, their true, sincere, slightly twisted selves. A fanfare for the uncommon man. <laughs> Curtis the Rib Man. Dick Porter, Thermometer Man. Chris Costonis, Coffee Man. Oh, here comes the dog. He's looking for coffee. Look at that white dog in that truck. He wants the coffee, I can tell. He's ready. <laughs> and don't forget Sadi Akjath, Hand Shadow Man. Rabbit is one of the toughest ones. A tribute, too, to the fairer sex, the innovators. We have our very exciting, always popular, llama poop necklaces. The iconoclasts. The idiosyncratic. Nuts can be so beautiful if locked around. Submitted for your consideration, Elizabeth Tushjian, Nut Lady. What do we say when encountering such a unique individual? Show us your stuff. We love New England's hunters and gatherers, beer can collectors, license plate protectors, connoisseurs with a passion for Pez dispensers, curators with an eye for bad art. Certainly we are doing our part for uh, the environment by keeping these out of landfills. Bob Kahn, the primitive man. How much is that? Do you know what it is? Uh, I assume it's, it's a leveling device to hold something. Oh, boy, do you assume wrong? Stuffs his van so full of stuff for sale, he doesn't know what stuff he has. If I ever lose things, I get up on the front bumper and I scan through, through the windshield to find where things are. John Hall, on the other hand, knows exactly what he has. That is a ball of hair that came out of a cow's stomach. You like that. I'm a silent comedian or electronic body musician. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> There's a body of talent we love to tap into in New England. Fashion forward thinkers like Nancy and Donald Featherstone. Featherstones have dressed alike every day since 1979. You name the occasion, we're ready. Cybernaut extraordinaire Thad Starner. Mount Washington's broadcasting legend, Marty on the Mountain. Now on the summit, visibility is 80 miles and the wind chill is 85 below. To these performers, we say, do your thing. <laughs> Billy Kay, channel the chairman. I've got you under my skin. James Carr. Camel walk in the footsteps of the godfather of soul. No! Nina Vickers, soothe the stressed out shopper. We salute John Barnes, who turned a cab into a cabaret. Carolyn Abagus, who turned housework into a workout. Sean Riley, whose appetite for life is boundless. Thank you, New England, for revealing your special selves. We feel your pride because, after all, we are one with you, too. What lurks behind these closed doors? One day, I heard on the television, a previewing next, the most interesting items ever left at the lost and found at Logan Airport. That was April 27, 2000. Catherine Dockey was about to watch one of our most popular programs, Behind Closed Doors. What's the strangest? I don't think I have to ask. <laughs> it's an accordion? That's, that's right up there on my list of the most bizarre things that have come in here. Yes. I saw the accordion and it had the big black letters E. Murphy on it. And I said, no, this can't be the same accordion that's been lost for seven or eight years now. Docky and her 83-year-old friend Ed Murphy headed to Logan Airport. 
As soon as he saw the accordion, he started to cry and put his hand on his heart. After eight very long years, Ed Murphy was reunited with his first and favorite squeeze box.